Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second webinar hosted jointly by AWS and Blueware. We're excited to show how you can leverage the OSDU data platform today to run interactive deep learning workflows on your seismic data. Today, we, all, we will have AWS Senior Solutions Architect for Global Partners, Drew Washist, starting us off. He has more than 17 years of experience developing enterprise solutions, including 13 years in the energy industry. Drew joined AWS in 2019 to help energy partners architect, build, and launch their solutions on AWS. We also have Blueware's Vice President of Commercialization, Eddie Garcia, who has worked in the software industry for more than 27 years and joined Blueware in 2013, where he specializes in delivering Blueware's commercial software. Drew will start, of, start us off today by providing an update on how the OSDU data platform is maturing and explain how easy it is to run applications on your data in OSDU on AWS. And Eddie will demonstrate how Blueware can enable you to stream data from the OSDU and run deep learning on the cloud today. Feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A section anytime during the webinar. We will have a Q&A at the end. So now I'll pass it to Drew, who will start us off. Thank you, Alex, and uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. So today I'm going to talk about OSTU and how it can be used for some energy industry use cases. So OSTU, if you're not aware of it, then uh, this is designed to solve a central problem. Energy workflows can be complex, involving many manual steps, and the data is frequently siloed. This means to use data from one application to another, you typically need to export and import it or transform it using ETLs to make sure that the data is supported in another application. Meaning A, you duplicate your data, which may become stale over time, and B, you may frequently lose uh, metadata associated with it. This results in a big challenge to integrate various types of data. Now, this is where OSTU comes into play. OSTU is a data platform led by the open group. It is designed to put the data at the center of the workflows to decouple data from application. Here, application can consume structured or unstructured data through standardized REST APIs in a single data platform. It supports both met metadata and master data to streamline workflows. This is a key goal and the reason that adoption of OSDU is being explored by all sizes of energy operators. So OSDU's production or Mercury release is focused on exploration, development, and well use cases by providing support for seismic and wells data. However, uh, the premise behind the OSDU energy data platform is that it can scale to be inclusive of the entire value chain. It includes emerging support for upstream production drilling and real-time data sources later this year, as well as ongoing work to mature variety of use cases. These include both solar and wind farm, which rely on time series data, as well as geothermal and carbon capture use cases. It's about an energy platform that expands into new energy initiatives and wide range of data sets that, that energy operators are challenged with today. Here, I'll talk about two things. Uh, one is a couple of use cases where energy operators are leveraging AWS implementation of OSDU, and then some potential opportunities or out of the possible use cases. Woodside wanted to make their entire historical archive of uh, seismic data searchable and accessible to users across multiple dimensions. So they used OSDU and custom indexing of existing metadata via Catalyst APIs, creating a comprehensive catalog of Woodside seismic data. In another use case, we have been working very closely with the team at Petrobras on JV data sharing solution to meet their needs and build the functionality. Now let's talk about some potential opportunities with OSDU. As OSDU is getting evolved, one is to reduce cumbersome data access for simple queries. An idea can involve Alexa-based integration with OSDU. Metadata as a component of workflow to query or provide troubleshooting assistance. Another opportunity is to streamline and safe data sharing with internal stakeholders. Collaboration of subsurface data requires sharing of appropriate uh, data while also maintaining full visibility and access control. Here, OSDU platform 
includes entitlements to ensure data is shared with relevant stakeholders and subject to full operational transparency. And the last one I'll mention here is to create scalable AI ML models with existing seismic or production data, which will come uh, at a later stage this year, and ability to expand models to include other data sources. And AI ML is the space where our partner Blueware is leveraging OSDU for deep learning. Here, Blueware and AWS with our SI partner Parveda work together to build and integrate a web application to search and select relevant seismic data from OSDU, which is consumed in interactive AI. Now, before I hand it over to Eddie to talk more about it, you can reach out to me via email if there are any specific questions. Also, there's a slide of information at the end. Um, thank you, over to you, Eddie. Thank you, Dhruv. And thanks everyone for attending the webinar. Uh, as Dhruv mentioned, data is at the center of OSDU and data is also at the center of Blueware. And so I'd like to talk about um, VDS, our volume data store. Uh, VDS is a highly advanced cloud optimized um, format for storing signal data. And in uh, 2018, Blueware contributed VDS to OSDU. Um, as uh, open VDS. And that's an open source API for the creation, reading and writing of, of VDS data. And when you combine VDS with a cloud object store, such as S3 on, um, on AWS, um, you get blazing uh, performance, blazing speed. And what do we do with all of that efficiency and, and, um, and speed performance we, we get? We, we can take uh, workflows that um, previously were impractical and uh, not only can we make them possible, we can make them highly performant. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> on this slide, we have uh, on the top part sort of outlined the traditional deep learning workflow. Uh, it's a heavy one. Um, you, you start off with a, a seg Y volume, you apply labels, uh, that, that volume is then um, processed in the uh, inline and crossline direction and all the inlines and crosslines are turned into images. Each of those images are then uh, cut into smaller blocks. Those small blocks are randomized and then each of those uh, images are then serialized into a TensorFlow record and then got pushed onto TensorFlow for, for training. Um, and that's one iteration. Uh, this iteration could take uh, days uh, you then have to feed multiple data models back into uh, this process. And since it's so heavy, the ultimate goal here is to produce a static global network uh, that knows something about what you're looking for. In this case, we'll say faults. Um, this is not a, it's not a bad approach uh, given SegWi as, as your uh, input and the tools that are available. Um, it's a reasonable approach, but it's way too heavy to, uh, to use on a new data set every time. So you have to go for this static global network that support, knows a little bit about a lot of faults. Um, now, when you take VDS uh, and its performance, what we can do is condense all of those steps into a very tight uh, interactive loop um, that we can then iterate very quickly and, and get our network to recognize exactly what it is that we're looking for. Uh, this, is the, we're the only, uh, this is the only solution that can, that can do this. They can start from a, a, a untrained network and um, quickly coalesce down to what you're, you're looking for. And <clears throat> this gives us the ability to cre create the Blueware interactive AI, uh, which puts the interpreter at the center on center stage, engages the interpreter in an interactive live training session with, with our deep learning uh, network and product. Um, you don't start with a, a canned network that was the output of a black box process, uh, trained on data and labels that you have no influence over and, and, and may or may not agree with. Um, the solution is cloud ready. The front end is a OSDU compliant web browser and the back end is a scalable Kubernetes cluster. When you're done with your session in uh, interactive AI, the outputs are directly usable in your downstream uh, workflows. 
Um, and this is a very powerful tool set. And we'll spend uh, uh, the next five or six minutes kind of going through a workflow on that. Uh, can we go to the video? We start by logging on to the OSDU environment. <clears throat> and I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank AWS and Paravita for collaborating with us um, on this interactive AI OSDU integration. Um, it's been a great experience. So here we have the data browser and we are searching for our uh, data set that we would like to uh, launch an interactive AI session on. And here we're launching it and in a matter of um, seconds, we'll have our session up and running. Uh, we're running on a subset of the Bono, um, I cannot remember the name of that, uh, that data set, but we have uh, five labels, uh, five lines that are labeled, partially labeled uh, for what we're interested in. Here we're interested in deep faults and uh, we're not interested in shallow faults. We've started the training here. You can see the labels are in green. At the bottom, the horizontal ruler line, you can also see some vertical uh, green lines. Those are the five lines that we have labeled. Um, at, this, at the end of this first epoch of training, you'll see that uh, it's beginning to learn about faults. Um, and the network has predicted or seen a correlation in the shallow areas with faults uh, that correspond to what we've labeled. We're not interested in those areas. So we will not provide any labels in those areas. And it will quickly learn that um, that's not something we're interested in. We're interested in a very specific type of fault. And the goal here uh, is to work interactively um, with the product to improve the training set because we gave it a very rough training set. Here we can see that um, the, the predictions in yellow are more refined and they extend deeper into the seismic. And we will now uh, kind of roll up our sleeves and, and work with the network in tandem, partner up and, and start this, this very powerful feedback loop where we um, take a closer look at the predictions and where it makes sense, we will um, refine our, our labels, our training set, make it a, a better, richer training set uh, in conjunction with the network. This is, not, uh, this is not a monologue, this is a dialogue. Um, and we can toggle the uh, inference on and off to kind of look at the underlying seismic and see, do we agree with what the network is uh, predicting here? And also in some cases, clean up our labels where they diverge from, uh, from the predictions of the network and make sure that we have a very good and clean data set. And we'll do that for each of the five lines that we have. And when we're happy with that, we will um, start another session of training. Um, this kind of hi this highlights the power of this approach and only Blueware can do this. Only interactive AI can do this. Start from a completely untrained network. It, it knows not what you, what you seek. And we define that interactively what we're looking for. And like I said, we could train it to only look for the deep faults, uh, not the shallow faults. We could also have reversed that. But the real power in this is that we don't have to be looking for faults at all. Um, if we were interested in uh, some geo bodies, uh, say salt or channels, um, injectites or intrusions, we could easily train it to do that. Uh, we like to say at Blueware, if you can see it, uh, you can train interactive AI to find it. Um, but it's not even limited to uh, geo bodies. We can look for DHIs. Uh, we can look for flat spots, bright spots, uh, dim spots. And this is not Blueware making these claims. So these are our customers coming back and um, you know finding new uses of the tool. Uh, finding new ways of, of using it and, and telling us how that you know how successful they're being with it and it uh, really is uh, pretty amazing. So as we further refine these uh, labels, we've kicked off more training. We we skip around to the other uh, lines that we have labeled, and uh, as it it uh, converges on what we want it to to find. Uh, we continue to refine these labels. When we're happy with that, we will then um, reset the training, reset the network, and begin a whole new suite 
of training, say for 14, 15 epochs. At, at that point, we, we scan the, the volume in various lines and look at uh, the inference on lines that we have not labeled. When we're happy with that result, like I said, we'll reset the network, start another training uh, session for 14, 15 epochs, uh, depends on the data set. And at the end of that, we will generate a probability cube uh, and fault sticks, or if we're looking for geo bodies, we'll, we'll generate surfaces. Uh, here you can see that we are taking the probability cube and importing it that's uh, into Cottrell. And we can load it up, look at it, co-render it with the seismic, uh, do a bit of QC, uh, see if we're happy with it. Uh, also, we can then load up the fault sticks that were generated as part of that process. Now, these are fully uh, editable fault objects, and they can, you can directly create a fault model from these. Uh, and we've had customers come back and, and uh, tell us that they've run this on hundreds of, of gigabytes of uh, volumes, and it's taken what would take them months to complete, and they can complete it in days. Uh, they're super happy with it. Uh, interactive AI is now available on the AWS marketplace. And if you'd like to learn more about um, interactive AI or any of the other technologies we have around uh, uh, data and signal data, please visit us at blueware.com. And I'll hand it off to Drew. Thank you, Eddie. So yeah, um... What information have we have available to get you going on OSDU? Um, first, what you see here is the web page that has information on OSDU data platform on AWS, including partner integrations. This is where we have uh, hosted our partners' demonstrations or demos on OSDU as well. Then we have application developer bootcamp sessions where you can get um, hands-on experience with OSDU implementation. And then there is an email address for deep dive sessions. Um, for the same. Thank you. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Drew and Eddie. That was informative, and I'm glad to see the power of AWS and Blueware on OSDU. Now I'd like to open it up for questions from the audience. So if you could please leave your questions in the Q&A section by clicking on the icon that should be at the bottom of your screen. We'll do our best to answer all your questions live, but if we aren't able to during this next 10 to 15 minute time period, please feel free to submit uh, your questions to info at blueware.com or email Drew. It looks like here we've received a question about, um, is there any control on defining the ge geometry of the bodies in the interactive AI? Um, for example, size of channels or sinosity. When, when you generate fault sticks or, or surfaces, uh, we didn't show that screen, but there are a lot of parameters that are exposed to how you want to refine or collapse down from the probability cube to, to the surfaces or, or um, fault sticks that you are interested in. And um, please, you know, please contact us at uh, info at blueware.com and we can go uh, much more in depth on that with you. We have another question. How do you deal with legacy seismic 2D and 3D data? So uh, 3D seismic data, uh, we, can, we can convert it to VDS and uh, legacy applications don't know how to, to, to read VDS clearly, but we have a couple of products there. We have conversion utilities for one um, and much, much more interesting and exciting. We have a product called FAST, which does li live transcoding of, of VDS data into um, into whatever format that you need it to be in to be consumed into your legacy application. That's a really exciting topic. It's a whole webinar by itself. Uh, so I won't go deeper into that, but again, go to blueware.com or, or send a, a question to info at blueware.com and we can get much more detailed about that. That's a great question. Some are asking if we'll have a recording of this webinar, which we will, we'll make it live via YouTube and send it out to all the attendees that can be shared. Uh, stay tuned for that. And we have another question. What did Blueware's technology do to improve the traditional deep learning processes? Is it just an improvement in the data access or does Blueware also improve the deep learning neural network ML model as well? We've started, at least this was true in the past, uh, with just a, a very general unit. Um, there's nothing fancy there, but we do have a, a group of really sharp data scientists that are going into refine um, the structure of that network to, to make it more performant and accurate. But the, the specialty is really in 
how quickly you can provide feedback to the, the network. So condensing those steps with the, the speed of an object store and the VDS data format in our compute engine to make those uh, run at an interactive speed is what allows us to, to quickly converge on the, on the results you're looking for. I see there's a question about the white patrol and that head wave. Uh, we wanna show that, um, that our interactive AI solution uh, works with industry standard uh, solutions as, as, as Petrel, but uh, certainly in Headwave or, or any other um, software suite that would uh, read in the Charisma file or um, you know, either a, a seg Y volume or whatever, we can produce the, the, the probability cubes and that could be loaded in any application. One question was FAS being used into the application for 3D. Uh, yes, actually, um, we didn't show that in the video uh, for the, the sake of brevity, but we did load um, VDS into Petrel uh, using FAST and live transcoding it into the ZGY format. Uh, you can also take the VDS file and just straight convert it to ZGY or SegY or PaleoScan. We have several formats that we, we support. We did receive a question in the chat session. Um, and you may have answered this earlier. It's a 2D CNN training, isn't it? Since you train the model from scratch and it runs very fast. How about 3D training? Due to the complexity of fault structures, does 3D training perform better than 2D training? Um, so I, I wish we had our CTO on this question and, and we can uh, please do follow up with me, but the... Um, I'm pretty sure that it's training in 3D. It's seeing the data in 3D. Uh, the optimization or the speed does not come from, from only doing 2D. It, it comes from being able to actively uh, query only the data that's required at the time that it's required in a highly optimized performant way. And that's what gives us the speed to be able to do this uh, on the fly. Uh, and that's, that's why we say basically Bluewer. Bluewer is the only, one that, only company that can do this right now. Um, because of the VDS format and, and the speed of a, of a cloud object store. And then we also have another one. I believe your Blueware software can read basic SegWi only, but oil and gas companies have data, data in older versions of workstations to move to the cloud. Yeah, hi, this is Andy James. VDS can handle many formats and we have many importers for different formats um, that can be used. So um, we have various different um, landmark formats that we can import, uh, ZGY formats. So it's not just limited to SegWi. VDS can handle pre-stack data and any of the SegWi formats that are needed, Pat. We have another question. How is Blueware integrated to different visualization, S slash W, like Petrel? Yeah, we have a Petrel plugin that, that, um, that, that integrates uh, Headwave with with Petrel, um, and we we have, I said the the fast transcoder that will take and feed data straight into a, a Petrel uh, as transcoded from VDS to ZGY. But th those are the only integrations I'm aware of. And Francois, uh, can we customize and test the the CNN hyperparameters? Um, I don't know what the latest state of that is. I know there are plans to expose some of those. Um, but we definitely have uh, data scientists that are working on, on various parameters on that to have different profiles in the networks. Uh, but that's something that um, if there's enough interest in, we may, we may provide a sort of an advanced feature uh, or data scientist kind of view in the product. One more question here. Rather than training by labeling seismic data sets directly, what would the workflow look like by starting with labeled well data? Uh, for example, well logs of rock type or facies with the goal of generating a 3D volume of rock type or facies, et cetera. Hi, Wes. Um, again, I'm not super qualified to speak to this, but we are looking at more advanced workflows uh, that would take um, wells into account not really prepared to talk beyond that, but uh, be assured that Blue Word does not stand still. 
And uh, even though we have a groundbreaking product right now, what I would consider to be groundbreaking and revolutionary, uh, we're looking to, to revolutionize upon that uh, in, in, the, in the short term, in the mid, mid to you know, 12 month time frame. Well, I think we're coming to an end. Uh, I want to thank everyone for participating today and thank you, Dhruv and Eddie, for all of your efforts uh, to provide a great presentation. Um, we hope that you all have a great day. Thank you.